picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Well, hello and welcome. It is time for another weekend here at Aztec Dummy. And this is going to be what I'm calling a, a loose end. Starting up the windows, sorry. It's going to be what I'm calling a, uh, a um, loose threads weekend. Tying up some stuff. I've got quite a few kits that I've got almost finished and I'm going to try to knock them out. Uh, the derelict we're going to finish, no problem. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of work on the painting of the base of the hopper and... Uh, touch up the last bits of paint on it maybe get it finished this weekend that'll be fun and um i still have that tiny bandai x-wing that i have not finished maybe i'll get to that this weekend so join me on another fun-filled romp won't you and this is the current state of the derelict it is mostly done um i want to make sure that it is completely done the finish is where i want it to be before i start putting these uh, clear pieces in because I don't want any extraneous spray getting on those and uh, flattening them out or dulling them out so um, and I'm also going to have to be careful I don't get any spray on those but that's kind of uh, that that ship has kind of sailed so let's see where we are here's your gaping maw well we're finally to the fun part of the derelict build getting ready to finish it we will be putting the I will be putting on the uh, the clear bits that go around the front the the are two different designs these guys and these guys and they don't uh, you know two of them go uh, here and the other three go that way and I was going to be very careful as to not because I don't want to get any spray on those because I want them to remain clear. So I took the uh, my favorite uh, spray of all time, the dust, and I lightly dusted over the epoxy on the inside of the maw there. And what that did was it flattened it without having to add any more stinky paint to it or stinky finishes to it. Just a nice, just a nice light coat of dust knocked down the... Uh, knock down the, the the high gloss of the epoxy so now i am ready to put these guys on uh the uh, unfortunate side effect of all of the many 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 coats of paint and finish and sealer and more paint and coats and sealer and all of that had the effect of closing over a lot of these holes not completely but awfully awfully uh, much more than is probably necessary so I'm going to have to take a a, uh, a uh, small drill bit and open those holes up a little bit just so that I can make room for these to go in and they should go in kind of tight and uh, I'm going to put them in with uh, the 10x down a little bit down the hole so any other glue that won't fr uh, frost them like if you were to use CA, that would uh, put a nasty frosting on the, uh, or clouding, on the clear styrene. So uh, let's get these guys stuck in place. And there's the derelict with all of the uh, antennae and other various colorful bits attached. Really brings it to life. It's that last bit that really uh, sparks the model. Uh, as sick as I was of looking at just the balls and the, and the uh, pedals on it. The adding those really helps and you don't have to be painted which is great so it means i am essentially done with the derelict and uh because mobius was so generous as to apply uh to supply us with not one not two but three jupiter twos one of which i've already got on the base here and this one i'm going to use as a separate the one with the landing gear i'm going to make a separate little diorama at a later date with the in interior cardboard uh this second one I think I am going to uh, try painting it up and see if I can do a little bit better job than I did with that one. And then I'll pick the best of the two to be on the in-flight stand. Welcome back. It is uh, Saturday noonish, And um, just got back from Michael's. Uh, have the completed derelict. La ta da da With the uh, nice clear bits up front. And it strikes me that this base is a little undersized that dome is just a little um for as big as this is that's a little small so what i did is i went out to michael's and picked up a simple wooden 
circle that they already make make nice yes I could have probably cut something out of particle board but uh, getting a perfect circle is not the easiest thing to do and what the heck they make them there so pick this up and I think that once I set this on here that's going to give me more of a proportional look now of course I'll just paint that black and probably put some sparklies on it uh, but I, I feel safer having that on there and also while I was there I picked up my favorite uh, material for the underside of bases which is black felt with an adhesive on it uh, the black felt with adhesive on it uh, is what I prefer to use because it, uh, if you, especially if you've got a wooden base, it'll take up all of the irregularities and bumps and whatever. And you just draw your shape on it. You put the thing down on it, draw the shape, cut it out, and you're there. Uh, which I need to do on the hopper base. Let's go look at the hopper base. And here we're out here in the other room looking at the hopper base. And I've got a bunch of, oops, ooh, that was fun. Bunch of painting to do on this. But I also have to put the, uh, felt underneath so I have mapped out where the hopper is going to be sitting on the base I have added some additional stonage around there and uh, this little neat feature which is some lichens coming coming out of the uh, crater out of the water feature so I will uh, um, touch that up with some paint but now that I've got the hopper uh, marked out as to where it's going to take up the space I can remove it and get to the painting of the base today and then here is the the uh dawn of justice batmobile and i need to put some felt under it as well so uh it's a heartfelt day today here is a better view of the base without the hopper taking up all the space on it you can see some of that which is growing out of the moss and the muck and the mire so now we get to put this on the table and do some painting but first, let me uh, prime up that uh, derelict base and get it off the table. Okay, here is the hopper base with the main colors kind of masked in. Now everything from here on will be either dry brush or um, washes of different colors. Uh, but this is the general gist of it before uh, too much uh, of the other work is started. I think I'll try to introduce some purples into the... Uh, into the grasses with uh, with the com arts, but uh, and I need to uh, lighten up the stone. Obviously, do some dry brushing on the highlights of the stones. But uh, this is the general the general idea. Okay, the uh, base is taking shape. I'm particularly fond with how these rocks in the back turned out, and the little pile of stones. Of course, those. The, pot, the hopper sits over top of those, so you really don't really see too much of that, but uh, uh, work in some more planetary details, and then it'll be ready for a uh, final dusting coat. Okay, I've just spent the last little bit going back in and trying to touch up some blues that have gotten gunk on them. Redid some of the blue under there. I'll have to go back and re-dirty that, but uh, um, yeah, I'm circling... It's circling the drain one way or another. It is uh, all but done. I'm getting to the point of overworking it now, so uh, best to leave it alone and call it a done thing. This is the last little bit of, of uh, nonsense that needs touching up. Here is the final base for the derelict. Uh, oddly enough, uh, I kind of like it. It, it would have made a good... Uh, texture for the derelict itself basically this is that rock or that uh, stone uh, texture paint and gooped on there quite liberally and then uh, just a gloss black over top of that so uh, uh, it actually has quite a nice texture when all is said and done but now I'm going to stick some uh, of the felt on the bottom okay here it is I tried to clean off the table to uh, make a presentable show showpiece for it, showcase for it, but yes, it is the finished derelict. Na na na. Yes, there's the troublesome. Never thought I'd get it done. Texture looks pretty good, and there's all of the clear 
do huggies and antennae sticking out and the Wii Jupiter 2 one of the three Wii Jupiter 2's I can change them out should I want to I do not have a Jupiter 2 in the crevasse in the mouth there but uh, uh, it's I think it's still out in the other room drying got the base done a uh, lot more substantial than just that little dome I think that was a good idea putting that on a plaque but uh, this is it the model that almost did me in. And here's from the other side. One almost wants to uh, find a way of motorizing that Jupiter 2, but uh, to circle around like it were a clock or something. But uh, there's that. Again, there's the. The finish is great because the closer you get to it, the more detail you actually see in it, which is kind of the idea. It should look fairly monochromatic from a distance but the closer you get to it the more detail you see. Before I clean the table off I wanted to bring the the base for the hopper out to show you the latest on it. Um, the red tablecloth is really throwing some of the colors off but uh, uh, it's to the point now where I need to put the felt underneath the bottom of it and uh, put the hopper on it. Now maybe the hopper base is the case where the uh, the wood table top uh, actually shows it off better so uh, this I don't like. I think I'm going to put another coat of uh, epo clear epoxy on the top of that to smooth the top of the water out and uh, maybe we'll pop the uh, the actual hopper on here tomorrow. Okay, uh, time to do some final bits on the base. I'm going to add some more uh, mossy stuff around the base of these rocks. And to do that, I am just going to do some white glue and some of the uh, flocking that I used before. I'm done here with a just with a Q-tip is kind of teased uh, teased some tendrils of glue out so that when I sprinkle the stuff on there it'll dry into this and then I'll just over, over powder the whole thing and then knock the dust off at a later date. And we're back inside with the base and yes it's fair to say that this looks a little artificial and a little bit uh, not quite as natural as it could. Now of course it's an alien planet so it could look like anything it wants to look like but I am taking an aesthetic from 60's television be it Star Trek or Lost in Space, to make these a little bit more exaggerated. Uh, that's part of the homage. Every single part of this hopper kit is an homage to something or another, whether it's a paint scheme, a detail bit, a, uh, a choice in lighting, or a choice in color. It's, a, it's an homage. It's a little of this, a little of that. It's a patchwork. And this base is no exception. You could say that that's a uh, Lost in Space base. You could easily say it's a Star Trek base with a big, what might look like paper mache rocks. You could you could say any of that, and you would be accurate. I, I'm not going to fault you a bit for that. But uh, yeah, most importantly, thing about this base is that it's done. We're back outside here on the uh, DOJ Batmobile base, and what I've done is just taken a coat of the. Uh, the filler primer that's a little bit of the, the lighter of the two gray primers and I have just put a light coat over the top of that a to give me more of a tonal difference between the light street and the dark Batmobile I'm afraid that they were getting a little bit too too similar in tone and B because I think I'm gonna try to simulate a, a road surface and that stone while it gives me the right texture was a little bit too granity for uh, for what might be considered a good road surface. I'm going to do a little bit of research now about the scale of things and I'm thinking of trying to put a, a double line of road there. Since I don't know that much about the movie other than it takes place in Gotham and Metropolis, um, I can't really say about the architecture or the background or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm just going to make it look like a, uh, a regular highway. 
Hey, let's look at our friend the hopper. We are down to the tiniest of details in uh, repairing things, and uh, that's what I've got to do now. Um, it's like picking a scab. Yes, this were a scab. I picked it, and now I have to fix it. So I need to work on the joints between these uh, engine bell inserts and the blue that goes around it. And then we will be, oh, 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 so close to finishing. I might even finish this weekend. Who knows? Okay, you can see where I have re-blued. i use a little pointing device. I needed to re-blue these areas right here um, to cover up some nastiness. So I'm letting that dry because that is the peekaboo blue that this whole thing originally was. And that is the enamel paint. So I'm going to let that dry under the fan for a good while. And then I'll drag out the Tamiya's and touch up this metallic brown that is on all four of those. So uh, we're at the drying stage. We're going to let this sit. Yeah, here's the Batman base. The Batmobile base with the lines painted on it. Let me uh, pull up the tape here and see how it turned out. That's not so bad. Uh, I think I may want to add maybe a oil spill in one of the lanes. Just something to break up the uh, pavement texture. But uh, yeah, I think that'll do quite nicely. Yeah, put some old oil smudges on there because if there was ever a place for old oil, it would be on the road. That's where old oil goes. So uh, now that it's appropriately scuffed up, I will go set the Batmobile back on it. There you go, the Batmobile showing a appropriately blatant disregard for traffic rules by crossing the double yellow line in the center. But yeah, I thought it gives it a lot more life and it does stand out more from the base than it did when they were closer in color. And while the hopper is drying in the west, uh, I'm trying to turn my attention to this neglected and unloved little X-Wing that I have... Uh, had on the workbench forever and uh, have not gotten back to. But it's time to uh, do some painting on it and I'm using my templates that I've made for it in what I call the reverse style. I have painted this general area blue and other parts of it that I want blue. I've painted all of that blue. And what I'm doing is I'm putting masks over the areas that I want to keep blue so that I can now put light grays and whites over top of it. And that includes the gray bits back there, hopefully to become more apparent once I start putting the templates down. But this is the alternate method. One way uh, you create stencils to put paint on, and others you use them as painting masks, like I do on the uh, uh, canopies, where you actually put uh, masks to protect paint or protect the finish that's underneath it so you can paint something else around it. So let's start with these wings. Took a little while, lot longer than I thought it would, but there's one wing masked off. There's the blue mask of this hat. Now I only have to do this four more, or three more times. Yeesh! I had to put the X-Wing aside so that I could get back into spraying on the hopper, since that is job one for the weekend. And uh, I'm ready to touch up the metallic brown around these thruster pods. So I'm trying to minimize the amount of time that the, pot, that the hopper is laid over on its side so uh, I gotta try to get all the things done while it's in that position that I can. Well as usually is the case I've run out of weekend long before I ran out of things to do to fill that weekend so uh, we're gonna call it a day for uh, this weekend and uh, let me show you where we ended up. Okay on the hopper we are tightening up paint jobs and patching mistakes on the paint job or boo-boos on the paint job or other unfortunatenesses. Um, like I said, it's getting tougher to tougher to tell what's new and what isn't because we're getting to the cleaning up stages. We are dangerously close to being finished with this. Um, let me uh, go out in the other room to show you the uh, other things that got done this weekend. And of course the big news this weekend was getting the uh, elaborate base done for the hopper or getting it painted at least um, the astronaut is in place the painting has been done the base on the uh, Batmobile is done until I decide whether or not I'm gonna put 
any sort of back wall on there. I don't know for sure. And of course, the biggest news of all was getting the uh, getting the derelict finished, getting the head noggin bits put on, and getting the base finished. Um, it was not. I was determined it was not going to beat me. So uh, yes, getting that done was a big uh, big step in the right direction. So it was one of those weekends where I uh, touched a lot of different projects and uh, got some things a lot closer to finished. Of course, the derelict is finished. The Batmobile uh, is finished. The uh, base here is finished. But uh, the hopper is not on the base, and that was something I was hoping to, to hop, get the hopper itself finished and getting it on the base was something I was hoping to have happen, and that was sadly not to be this weekend. So... Uh, Gives us something to do next week. And that's where we finish for the week. Uh, now, it may be a cheesy excuse to say that this daylight savings time, losing that hour was made all the difference in the world, but it really didn't. I spent a lot of time stripping and cleaning an airbrush, which I hate to do, but it, it needs to be done. And it's uh, one of those things that, you know, if, you pro if I properly, if I learned how to properly maintain them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take near as much time to do it. But I really had to clean that one out. It had been long neglected. <laughs> Sorry about that, Rob. Anyway, um, we are, I am dangerously close to finishing the hopper. I know, I'm, I'm almost to the point where I'm tired of it. And that's when I start making the big mistakes. So uh, I need to finish it before I do something really stupid and get it on the base and get it ready. And uh, it's mid-March now, April, May, June 1st, first weekend in June is Wonderfest so now I am starting to think about what I'm going to take to Wonderfest and uh, get and if, I, if I haven't built it yet get it out and build it and uh, if I am going to take it to uh, see what I need to do as far as cleaning it and getting it ready for presentation so uh, um, join us in the coming weeks and uh, we'll be running down that merry path so until next week when I will see you back here be good, have a good week, be nice to each other, and uh, see you next time.